I don't know what to say. Somebody got to do something. And if I can answer it within five seconds of thinking about it, I definitely will. Absolutely. Oh. No problem. Oh, Mikase, more like no Mikase. There are a lot of cannabis shops opening up in the city. Yeah. Almost like too many. Here are 30 points on the Fung Bros unofficial guide to living in New York City. Andrew, a lot of people always message us. They ask us this question privately in DMs. What is it like living in New York City? Andrew, we decided to compile our own guide after not really finding the info we wanted available out there on YouTube and previously existing blogs, right? Yeah, I mean, I watched a lot of the advice videos and a lot of it is good sound advice. If you go to like Central Park a lot or if you do all these things, you go to Smithsonian, you go to the Smith or, or you go to Uptown, about all these different things. But for our lives, this is the advice that we came up with. So hopefully, you know, you find something useful from it, especially if you like Lower Manhattan, of course. You know, that is where we spend a lot of our time. But uh, let's get into point number one, guys. Andrew, point number one, the 2022 NYC airport rankings go LaGuardia because they remodeled it. So that's number one. Newark, number two. That's a controversial pick because it's New Jersey. And number three, coming in dead last, is actually the airport with the most flights that is the cheapest, Andrew, JFK. Man, LGA, if I can get a flight out of LGA, it's not only closer, but it's kind of smaller, so it's less congested and it's less busy. I will say, man, taking red-eye flights at JFK or early morning flights are, 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 is, can be kind of stressful. Number two, Andrew, scootering is absolutely the best way to get around New York City, obviously, especially Manhattan, but probably the boroughs as well. And uh, it actually superseded the subway because the subway has lost a lot of appeal, whether it's due to danger or dirtiness or whatever, whatever, just the subway not popping anymore, even though they kind of got the tap to pay, which is a nice feature, whatever. Scooters is where it's at, Andrew. Evan Fournier rides one too to Madison Square Garden. He's a basketball player on the Knicks. And I think it's really funny. Sometimes they'll see us on our scooters and maybe we got another friend with a scooter and they're always like, scooter gang. I don't know. I didn't make it up. That's what it, people yell at us sometimes though. I just say scooter life. It's, it's a just, scooter life. It's just like so good. I got to say, man, shout out to you, Scooters. We got a code down below. Uh, just the Scooters work better than I ever could have imagined. Point number three, Andrew, open drug use is a problem. Now, I think it's a problem in every major metropolitan city around America, possibly the world right now, but more so America. I mean, when you find a needle in the bike lane when I'm on my scooter from point number two, I'm just saying that is a cause for legitimate concern, especially for people with kids, families. You know, they don't want to be exposed to that type of stuff. You know, I saw somebody wrapping a rubber band around their leg at the park across from a child's park at Grand Street. You know, I don't know what to say. Somebody got to do something. Obviously, New York City is a big city, and oftentimes it is considered very dangerous. Statistically speaking, based on how many people you're around, New York is still very, very safe. It's just that you come in contact with so many different types of people. Obviously, if it had the same percentage uh, ratio with people in crimes that like Alabama did have, you know, it'd be a, even a crazier place. But either way, New York is doing okay considering everything. Point number four, Andrew, a lot of people debate on these like YouTube videos and online forums and stuff like that about how to find a free, clean, nice public bathroom in New York City. And Andrew, I got a very unorthodox take on this. You just can't. I just can't believe people are downloading apps and trying to get codes to like coffee shops. Just pay for a coffee, pay for a Diet Coke. It's like gonna be two to $5. You can use the bathroom for like five to 15 minutes get on your phone and you get a Diet Coke out of it. I just don't understand why people would want to stand in line with like 20 people at a Starbucks or try to trick the concierge at a hotel to let them use the bathroom. I don't know, it seems ridiculous to me. I mean, if you buy a drink at a spot, it's not like you're paying for the bathroom. You're paying for the drink and the bathroom is a plus. When you do go into a spot and you pay for something, you do feel it more entitled to, you know, use the bathroom for a little bit longer. You know, you don't have to act all sneaky. Yeah, drop two big poops. Who cares? You paid for it. Oh, buy a drink, drop a dookie. Nice. Point number five, Andrew, New Yorkers, especially local New Yorkers, they are not rude, but they are on a time crunch and they can get rude if you violate their time flow. I would say people got a flow and they're on the go, but if you need help, they will let you know. As in the fact, like, listen, we've all helped like an older lady bring her cart up the stairs or help someone over a curb. You know, if it doesn't take a lot of effort and it's within our flow, I think New Yorkers are very, very helpful. However, if you try to stop them in their tracks and waste their time, people do not like that. 
Yeah, people are about the flow, but they want to. They just want everybody else to flow too, but just don't stop their flow. Point number six to sort of piggyback off this scenario, Andrew. If people ask you for your time, sometimes that can be a scam. So you do not want to get scammed out of your time or your money. Andrew, one time, a couple years ago, somebody was asking us for directions. I didn't know. I was a little bit wary, but I busted out my phone. I looked it up for them on GPS. One thing led to another. All of a sudden, they're asking for money. They wanted to take our scooters. They're asking for everything. And I was like, yo, I almost set myself up. I super regret trying to help this person trying to scam me. I will never do this again. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you got a question about directions, it's no problem asking somebody, but just ask that question straight up. Do not ask somebody, oh, hey, do you have a, a minute? Can I ask you a question? No, no, you don't have a minute to ask. Just oh, ask oh. me the question right now. And if I can answer it within five seconds of thinking about it, I definitely will. Absolutely oh, no problem. If people say, can I call a number? No. Can you look up something for me on the internet? No. If you don't know the answer to the direction question, don't look it up on Google. That's it. You just don't know. Point number seven, Andrew, this is a little bit more lighthearted. The $200, $250 omakase Japanese sushi date is not worth it. Well, David, how many of these did you go on, man? We didn't go together. So who were you out with? Because I didn't eat that many omakases. But I'll tell you this, guys. There is plenty of great food in New York City at a $40 to $60 price point. Obviously, that's, you know, for a night out when you're trying to show someone something cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to go to these crazy places even if you have the money. Omakase, more like no makase. Wow, David, what are you trying to say about sushi? Huh? You're saying it's yeah. overpriced? Yeah, listen, guys, if you're rich, I mean, and money's like, doesn't even mean anything to you, yeah, just go to them, go them every night. There's new ones opening every three days. Hey, there's still great meals for under $15 a person, too, guys. We did a whole series on it. Ah. Number eight, Andrew, the majority of bagel spots and pizza spots and Chinese takeouts are surprisingly not worth eating at. Wow, a little controversial here. I would say that there are probably items at each of these spots that are worth getting. Also, I will say for dollar pizzas, two bros is probably at the top of my list. However, yes, this is not food that I would eat all the time, but maybe in a pinch. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make a commentary on like whether these foods are better in other cities or not, but just like I had some pretty bad bagels in New York before too, like ones that were not like amazing. All I'm saying is, Andrew, in a city that's like known for certain foods, we're talking about bagels, pizza, Chinese takeout. These have been around for like 50, 60, 70 years, 80 years in New York City. I'm just saying you still got to go to like the high ranked spots that are known for being good. It's not like you're just going to walk into a random spot on the corner and have an amazing bagel. Yeah, I will say some of the Chinese spots, man, they got great fried chicken wings. Number nine, Andrew, you need noise canceling earbuds or headphones. Obviously, headphones are a little bit more dangerous because you're more oblivious. But when you're at a coffee shop, you know, the sounds of the street and there's so many people around it's a very dense city it's one of the densest in the world the most dense in america you just need the anc mode to like lock in and focus on what you're doing but you also need the transparency mode to be safe yeah you need both i would say when you're walking have the transparency mode on and definitely be looking around man i'm not gonna lie some people with big old headphones have walked into the bike lanes while i'm zooming down there and uh i, I just wish that they would have looked the other way so we wouldn't even have to try to dodge each other. Point number 10, Andrew, when waiting for an elevator, make sure you wait for the people to exit the cart or whatever mechanical device it is, a subway cart, before you walk in. David, this seems like pretty common sense, man. Why, why, why did you want to put this point on here? Some people just really don't know how to do it, to be honest. I mean, even people in our building don't know how to do it. I do think, <clears throat> hate to say it, that some Asian people, they tend to be taking like, maybe from asia like people do this more where they're like just say right china i've I seen it in hong kong maybe it's chinese people but gosh some people try to bum rush the elevator when you got to exit and then you're almost bumping each other guys trust me i get it that everybody is eager to get on to go where they need to go but trust me if you're bumping and cramming things it actually just makes things worse Point number 11, Andrew, the subways, especially at local stops, sometimes have a different entrance for trains that go uptown, which is north, and trains that go downtown, which is south. And uh, if you don't really ride the train a lot, you can get lost and it can get confusing. Yeah, definitely. Like if you're on your usual route, it's probably not a problem. But when you need a bus to move or transfer or, you know, sometimes the entrance to a certain train is you have to go through a different platform to get to that platform. So that's a little confusing. I do wish 
wish maybe in the subway there was a few more directions on that, but ultimately it takes some time to understand. Just take a scooter, guys. Point number 12, Andrew, some of the expensive supermarkets like Whole Foods actually can have cheaper items than like a Rite Aid or like a Metro Acres or something like by us. Like sometimes it's weird, like a crappy looking market can have higher prices than a Whole Foods. Obviously, I'm not talking about the hot, hot bar or like gourmet items, but I'm talking about like on a, a can of beer or something. Okay, I will say that the cheapest grocery stores that have chains in New York are probably Key Foods and Trader Joe's. Key Foods, baked chicken, I guess is maybe it's not as good as Whole Foods, but it's definitely cheaper. Point number 13, there is just a lot of different streets everywhere. Like for example, you might live a hundred feet from a street that you've never even explored. And there's like a bunch of businesses on that street. So that's one thing I noticed about New York. It's just super dense. And sometimes it got crisscrosses and got weird alleyways and things like that. Hey Dave, I will say as much as the scooter allows me to explore the city in a different way, I will say when I walk the same streets that I scooter on, usually I do see things a little bit differently. Cause when you're walking, you're right there next to the door. You're not flying by it. No, to be honest, when you scooter, it probably only gives you like 30% of the sensory experience, but uh, you do see things more from a bird's eye view when you scooter. It's more like a bird's eye map view. Point number 14, Andrew, a lot of people don't know this, but there's actually usually three different types of delis or bodegas. Bodegas typically would only refer to the ones owned by Spanish people, usually Dominican, but there's Dominican bodegas. There are Arab owned stores. There are Bengali or Indian owned stores. And even Koreans, number four, are famous for owning delicatessens that serve like really more expensive sandwiches. Yeah, I would say in Soho and East Village, you're going to find a lot of the Korean owned ones. They might have a lot of like the flowers outside. They kind of look like those shops in the movies where you can buy a bouquet of flowers and then a big bunch of chopped fruit. And then obviously at the bodega or the smaller delis, you're going to be also, you know, you get your chopped cheese or you get your bacon, egg and cheese and stuff. Yeah, and you can tell uh, which spots are owned by Arab people, for example, or Middle Eastern people because they will typically not serve pork. Number 15, if you do live in New York City and you do volunteer work, just make sure it's worth your time because, you know, a good organization is going to take your volunteer work and try to make the back maximum impact in the society or in a given field, but also like not waste your time. Right. And I will say, though, there are so many people in New York City that there are a lot of volunteer opportunities. So you can probably try them out relatively quickly. Yeah. And don't feel like bad about nixing something where you're like, man, this ain't really my vibe in terms of like how I want to give back to society. I'm going to move on. Number 16, guys. Vertical storage is huge. I think it goes without saying that New York apartments are tiny and expensive. That's why you need to stack it up. And sometimes if you got, you know, cool things, I mean, it can even look aesthetic. Vertical storage. Stack it up on my way. Number 17, Andrew. A lot of people say that going out and living this nightlife-centric lifestyle in New York City is hyper expensive. However, Andrew... It does depend on what crowd you hang out with. You can drink on a stoop. You can go to a dive bar. You can spend $7,000 on a DJ at Brooklyn Mirage. There are so many levels, low, middle, high, and it depends on what you and your friend group deem as normative behavior. Yo, you know what's a normative behavior that I want to normalize? Doing the buy one, get one free on Uber Eats, man. There's always deals on your apps. You can save a lot of money in this city. Obviously, you can also spend a lot of money in this city. But guys, you do not have to live this crazy lifestyle. I get it that, yes, if you want to go to the club all the time and you want to be a baller and get a table, well, guess what? You're going to be spending a ton of money. But everybody on, like, no lead a dirtbag meme page is, like, going to Carbone. How can I get the Carbone memes if I don't go to Carbone? No, you know what hipsters actually really like to do? They like to be hanging out at Dime Square, you know, that part of Canal and Division Street, and they like to drink wine outside even if it's cold. Number 18, furnished rentals are a great way to test out if you even want to live in New York City, you know, for an extended period of time or while you are apartment searching. That way you don't get forced into a time crunch and you make a bad read out of jumpiness or urgency. Hey, here's a hack. Here's a hack to stay in New York for a month. If you have a friend who is nice enough to let you crash on their couch, but you just get a gym membership, even if you get an Equinox one nearby for a month, which is about, what, $250 to $300, literally that's all you need to live in New York City, a couch and an Equinox or just any other gym. Number 19, Andrew, as good as the food is in New York City and how many famous chefs have been on how many famous shows and won how many famous awards, I'm not waiting in line for something more than 20 minutes. What? 
David. We're talking about Dominic Ansel. We're talking about Uncle I'm not waiting in line for more than 20 minutes. I don't care what it is. And it's not because that item is not great, but there is a alternative that is probably like at least 80 or 90% as good with zero weight. David, you're not waiting in line for a Korean hot dog. You're not going to be waiting in line for that Taiwanese waffle that's in the shape of a, a pee-pee. Number 20, and this is a big thing where I disagree with a lot of the New York like tourism experts or whatever. You do need to carry cash. I mean, you need the cash to go to a lot of like old school spots that take cash only. So. Yeah, what, David, what else would you say some other things are that people should carry in their pocket that maybe don't take up too much space, but that are still useful? All right, so actually I use a vault wallet that is pretty big. It's almost like a you know hard drive looking thing, but it's not that big. I carry Pepto tablets, I drop vials, a flat chapstick, obviously cash for the cash only spots. I even got an air tag in there so I can track my wallet if people lose it or try to steal it. Number 21, Andrew, this one is a little bit more new age. Finding your tribe, and if your tribe is your vibe, how do you find that vibe? Now, I know a lot of people sign up for sports clubs, right? They sign up for nonprofits. I guess, to me, New York City is a little bit like college or undergraduate, where you can sort of organize yourself, or at least organize part of your week by shared mutual interest groups. Mm. And you know what I think is actually very common is like people just dropping in with a friend to do something. And then, you know, in New York businesses, they're very flexible and they're used to people doing this. So if you want to just kind of walk into spots and just be really nice and just talk to people, I really think that's actually a good way to either like join clubs or drop in on a class here or there, or you can even use class pass, for example, you know, for, for, for sports and gyms. Number 22, Andrew, it would be nice if you were to live in New York City to build some relationships with shop owners, uh, uh, people who own things or, you know, people who manage local spots. No, guys, it's very, very important to at least know the name or have some type of relationship with the area and the spots around you. Even if they're not exactly like you, one, it's interesting. You always have a good conversation, but literally like it's good to know bartenders, like just to know their name, be friendly. Like I'm not saying be their best friend necessarily, but you just got to know your local area and uh, that's going to help you stay in the city longer. And that also helps you understand and feel like you have more of a neighborhood in this big metropolis of a city. I think people who do not make friends with like local owners, they're way more likely from what I've seen statistically to leave after like one to five or seven years or however long you end up staying like for sure. Cause you're not feeling like it's your uh, home place. Number 23, Andrew, I would carry a small action bag with me wherever I go, especially if I know I'm about to be out in the city all day long in the wintertime. That means gloves, hand sanitizers, wipes, gum, Listerine strips, a cell phone charger, basically a pack of wet wipes. If you know you're going to be outside, you want to be ready to just feel comfortable. Yo, I'm not going to lie. When I know I have to ride a city bike, I do bring wet wipes with me especially if I'm riding a city bike to a date where I'm going to see the date and I'm going to, I know I'm going to like shake their hand or hug them or something right afterwards, you know, just cause I don't know who's touching the city bikes. Anyways, that's something I do. Number 24, when it comes to expenses, there is a lot of advice on how to track your spending this app, that app, what to spend on, what not to spend on. For me, one big thing I'm a big about is just not having monthly subscriptions. It's okay uh, to buy something when you need it, right? If you need it, you need it. Now, who am I to judge what you need when you need it? But just don't have a monthly subscription, man, because that means that there might be a month where you don't need that thing and you get that thing and you've paid for it. Here's a, I don't know if it's controversial, but I do think getting a good gym membership, I'm not gonna name the gyms, but even if it's kind of expensive, but if you use it all the time and you know you're gonna go there in the morning and use it at least four to five times a week, it is totally worth it. Uh, it's a whole new social system. Uh, you'll get fit. Obviously, it's a whole place you can spend time in. You can do other things there. So it's like multi-purpose. So that's why I do think having a good gym can be worth it if you're going to use it a lot. For sure. But it's crazy. Some people, Andrew, have hinge subscriptions. That means they're paying money per month for the hinge subscription and the roses just to go on more dates where they're going to spend more money. That is a crazy multiplier. And point number 25, we're going to go through some TikTok hacks that I got off BuzzFeed real quick and give my general opinion. Like I said, I'm not the god of NYC. I don't really know, but these are just my opinions. Andrew, what do you think about hitting up pop-up events thrown by brands to get free drinks and free cool stuff? You can do it. You can do it. I mean, I think it is a better deal than going to like pay $50 for Pizza Fest or Ramen Fest 
Do not do those foodie events. It is not worth it. I mean, some people gain a lot of satisfaction from kind of getting a deal and like sneaking their way into like having fun together. You know, I mean, it's fun. It's random. Do it. City bikes, Andrew. I know the gray plastic ones are especially good, but uh, I know you are a little bit more into city bikes than me. For me, I'm scooter only. I'm yep. not in some places you cannot go and bring a scooter into. Sometimes it's not convenient, man. Sometimes there is time for a city bike. And what do you think about coffee subscriptions? You know, some people like Pretza Manger, they are offering a monthly co coffee subscription for 20 bucks. Um, for me, like I said, if you live right next to one, like I'm talking about like within one block, I could totally see signing up for it. Otherwise, you know, it's just not going to fit your use case. Things are only worth it if you're going to use it a lot. Let me repeat, expensive memberships and items are worth it if you are going to use them often. Next up, we got studying at the public library. For me, I've done this before. I'm not a fan. I'd rather pay six bucks for a matcha at a nice coffee shop, get the cleaner bathroom. I, I just, I'm not saying I never did it. I, I just not a fan. Gallery hopping, instead of paying Andrew and going really far to go to an arts museum to get into a exhibition, you just hop the independent galleries in a gallery heavy district like Chelsea or LES. What do you think? This is fun, guys. And then also, uh, you know, it's not really like, you know, you're just, it kind of forces you to ask a lot more questions because you want to find out more. But yes, that's the one cool thing about having all these free galleries. But around. I would say the artists are not going to be as famous and it's definitely not going to be like a Banksy exhibit. You know, that's going to be at the expensive museum. Rent the runway, Andrew. I know a lot of girls in New York City, they wear a lot of expensive clothes. Maybe they wear it for this event, for this season. I could see rent the runway making sense for some people if they want to be trendy all the time. But uh, definitely, you got to make sure that fits your use case. To, uh, to be honest, I can't imagine more than 3 to 5% of the population needs Rent the Runway. Make sure you're part of that 3 to 5% before you sign up for it. Andrew, using Facebook Marketplace or just finding stuff on the street to furnish your apartment, this is sort of a cheap hack for younger people in New York City. What do you think of this? Uh, yeah, obviously, the one aspect is like, do you know if it's clean or not? Or it's probably not clean, and then you got to clean it. So I think if you have a way to do that, or if you're one of those people, you know, who cleanliness is not the number one priority, that's fine, man, live your life. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's totally possible. I know I, people who do this. Of these two, I would like Facebook Marketplace better. But obviously, the free and impulsive choice is just picking stuff off off the street. Andrew, this is talking about the Blink Gym membership. You know, that's the cheapest gym uh, in the city that you can get a membership to. I would say this, guys. If you're just crashing on somebody's couch, like you said, Andrew, you could get, even get the Soho House membership and the Equinox and it could be lit. I mean, it depends on what kind of couch you're sleeping on. What do you think, Andrew, about using AMC Tuesdays or the Regal Unlimited Pass? This is uh, for people who really like watching a lot of movies. For me, I'm not the biggest fan. I'd rather watch the movies at my house. All right, you guys, that's what we thought of the TikTok hacks. Point number 26, Andrew, we are going to get into things that have changed in New York City so much from six, seven years ago. Is that the first time we moved here? We are back again for the third time. Andrew, you know what I noticed? The targets and Trader Joe's proliferation around the city has totally changed everything. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say there's a lot more Best Buys now. Oh, there's way more Whole Foods too. Yeah. And delivery apps are are more common now. Obviously, now on a super super rainy day, maybe sit in uh, customers are even less, and because people are more ordering in. Oh, you know what I noticed? More and more people have like washer and dryer in their apartments. It used to be really rare, like ten years ago. Now it's like more common. Yo, man, there are a lot of weed and cannabis shops opening up in the city. Yeah, almost like. Too many? Oh, there's way more resale shops. You can sell your streetwear, sneakers. You know, you can just flip it real quick, get cash, get credit. Andrew, you know what I noticed? Winters are not that bad anymore. Now, I'm not saying global warming isn't bad or climate change isn't bad and especially bad for Florida. But in New York, Andrew, it just means less snow, less sludge, less ice. Number 27, do not pick a high floor walk up. It's not worth it. Overall, yes, is there pros and cons? I would say as somebody who picked a fourth or fifth floor one time when I should have picked the first floor option, it's not worth it. Number 28, Andrew, this is a pattern that I noticed. If you only live or hang out with other transplants, you're probably going to be going home in two to seven years. And now there's nothing wrong with going home, but I just noticed that a lot of people, like if you don't adapt and have local friends, that's a pretty good indicator that you're like, you know what I mean? Like you're not really 
going to stick around. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people move to the city when they're like 26, 27, 28. They want to live for a few years, but they really just want to party as much as possible, um, which there's nothing wrong with, but that's not really building like a local life for yourself. Like you still have to make friends and like get to know local people yeah. to really want to stay. Yeah, shout out to uh, all the people from Houston. I had no idea that, Andrew, groups of like 10 to like 30 Asians from Houston would all move to New York City at the same time and they all hang out with each other and play sports teams. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying they're not really like becoming a part of the city. Number 29, Andrew, this is a little bit more unorthodox advice. I mean, this is just how I feel. Do not only have one barber that you're tied to. I cannot imagine changing my life schedule around my barber. I don't know, Andrew, you, you're more in the hair than me. I mean, I see why people stick with one barber, but I think definitely having a solid plan B or plan C, guys. I mean, listen, there's actually a lot of spots you can get a haircut at uh, around the city. And even in Chinatown, man, some of those $10 haircuts are still decent. Yeah, dude, people are good at cutting hair in New York City. Like, whether it's low, middle, high, people are relatively good. David, last but not least, we have number 30. This is kind of a funny piece of advice for people. And uh, this is something that we especially learned while scootering and being in the bike lane and riding in the streets a lot. David, what is it? If you hear the engine roar of a ATV or a unauthorized dirt bike on the street, just stop whatever you're doing. Because if you got the light, the walk signal as a pedestrian, just don't walk. Because the chances are those ATVs and those dirt bikes are running the red. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying 100%, but just, just don't risk it, guys. Watch out for the Rough Riders. Meow. All right, you guys, that is it for our 30 points on the Fun Bros unofficial guide to living in New York City. We could have thought of 60, 90, 100 points, but the list had to end at some point. Let us know in the comment section below if you agree, disagree, what additional tips you have, and if you like these type of hyper local New York City videos. So many people were just messaging me. That's why I had to write this one. Let us know. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.